Hey, Love and Legacy fans, we're back. I'm Jalencia. And I'm Brandon. And we're here to break down some financial insights, tips, wisdoms, experiences that might help you on your way in your um, early wedding planning or even in your um, newlywed adventure with your person um, because it all applies. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about financial wellness as well as uh, some strategies and tips to set a good foundation, especially for the newly engaged folks. And like Brandon said, the freshly married people can get some insights here too. We know a lot of the reasons people separate or have a lot of friction in their marriage usually comes from money issues. So it's important to set that solid foundation from the jump. So you know where you stand, you know where your partner stands, and you can work together because it is a partnership at the end of the day. Yeah, um, the idea is not to be broke, you know, not to, um, or have a broke attitude, broke mentality, um, because you can have the assets and resources coming in, but if you have a broke mentality, meaning you don't, you're not really in tune with who you are, the money just comes and then it goes, you don't know where it went, and that's just because you just not really in tune with what yourself or your because or it may not be you it could be your spouse spending all the money you making it uh, versus vice versa so you got to be able to identify what's coming in what's going out and um ma- uh, modifying your lifestyle so you don't feel like you're in a rat race yeah. constantly working and it feels like all the money that you make is gone and you can't spend anything on any personal enjoyment So um, one of the first things you want to do, especially being newly engaged, or like we said, freshly married, you want to sit down, but preferably before you get married, sit down and kind of find out where your financial status is, what's your debt look like, how much debt do you have, what's your credit score, what um, hindrance do you have on your credit report that um, need to be resolved before you jump into a a unit, a unified, excuse me, um, credit um, what it looks like for me might not look the same for you and vice versa for Brandon what it looks like for him doesn't look the same for me so you want to make sure that you're on one accord before you get things started um, because it'll reduce a lot of friction along the way yeah there'll still be um, issues like normal just because like I said everybody's different and your financial goals may not be the same, but you want to at least start off on a good foundation so that you can both move towards the right direction. Yeah, it's um, no surprises. I mean, as much as, you know, financial surprises like, up, oh, it's all gone. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's not going to make you laugh. Um, and the idea is to, there's no such thing as any perfect relationship marriage. Um, even when you're even in a, planning phases of it it's stressful and then after you get married newly to this person there's there's all these type of stresses and hurdles but your a job is to try to um mitigate move around some of the hurdles you don't have to go head first into everything and learn the hard way so sometimes you can take some good advice some good insights and uh one i like to uh, lean on is trust you um would (laughs) It looks kind of funny, and I've seen it. It's not it's, it's not funny, but I've seen it that, you know, you have this person that you're with, and you love them, they love you, but you can't trust them with the money. Um, whether, the, you know, whether you don't have enough confidence that they're going to do all the right stuff or they're going to not do the right things and not tell you the truth about it. So you got to know, um, look, at it, look at it all ways about not trying to shoot yourself in the foot about just having, and it's just communication. We want to have to have the know where we're going. You know, you got your career, it's careers, and however you're making your money or whatnot. And we decided to do this thing together, so that's our trust. Do we need to have separate accounts? Uh, okay, maybe if you look need to have some identity, but you'll do better working it out of, out of one because you don't have. There's no questions about my responsibility to you, your responsibility to me. Uh, you know, jokingly, um, if you have a if you don't have this thing of of a joint account um, and you're buying stuff and then it gets audited by your other person and like, hey, I didn't 
have any pink pants. Where are these pink pants that you bought? <laughs> or something to that effect. And that's a joke, but it's serious because you don't have to explain it if it's all going on one spot. Yeah, so that brings a good question about joint accounts. Do you have them? Don't you have them? Um, some people have a joint account and then still have separate accounts for their own personal spending or for their own personal goals. Some people, like us, we just have a joint account, joint accounts, that's it, no separation. But regardless of what thing you choose, just make sure that whether you have joint or separate accounts, that both parties have access to the accounts. Oh, yeah. So there's no secrets. There's no, like Brandon was saying, um, uh, misappropriation of funds, <laughs> for lack of better words, going elsewhere. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think is you always got to think about the future. Um, and setting and going and starting off on the right foot. Um, and like knowing having this openness openness of communication to talk about your debt but more importantly what i'm learning um because you know no one we're not the zen masters of everything because we're learning (laughs) um as we're going along and just trying to we've been doing it for over a decade so we have a good idea of what to do but it's no no knowledge is perfect and my suggestion would be to think about the future but also Think about your here and now as far as your budget, meaning see where your budget, <clears throat> see where you are as far as your lifestyle, like things that I know that I got to have, right? There's things that I know I got to have every month and I can't budge on it because that's just who I am. But that's changed over the years of what I feel like I needed to have. Yeah. So you got to identify the change in yourself, which really definitely reflects your budget about what you feel like you need to have and what you don't. And I found out less is more. You don't really need as much as you think you need. Um, Whether if you have vices or whatever things that you feel like you got to have, you don't need as much as you think. And that eats into your budget. And then if you can have less of whatever you think you need, speaking around whatever it is in general, because people buy things, whether that's a whole bunch of soda, Jordans, cookies, Cookies, creams, chips, cookies, and all that stuff. Right. So the idea is just uh, getting your budget around um, what you want and try to lessen it. And uh, speaking of planning for the future, one thing you want to be mindful of, especially after you're married, along, and it kind of goes along with joint accounts, is um, just having access to that. But then you want to think also about your investments, your life insurance, you know, your retirement funds, making sure that your spouse is included on those things so that, God forbid, something happens with your health or your spouse's health, they're covered and they don't have to, oh, well, I can't talk to you because you're not authorized to speak on this account and you get run into those roadblocks because sometimes, depending on the state of the, your, you or your partner's health, they can't speak up and say, hey, no, that's, that's my husband. He should be able to access that. So it's one... It's something that you also want to consider when it comes to planning for the future. Not just the money, but access for long term. Because, of course, you don't ever plan for things to happen. But sometimes things happen that's out of our control. And you don't want to be in a situation where your hands are tied and no one can help you out. Yeah. right. You, you just kind of want to be wise uh, the best you can um, using, using your intelligence, using your consciousness. Um, to develop a, a good plan, because um, if you plan well, um, you can, you know, it's not perfect, but just getting a good plan out of what you think. Like, <clears throat> for example, um, I guess kind of going back to budget, where, like, where, what, um, when you're talking as far as like your your vision, like, what do you want um, out of your life? Um, like what you're budgeting for? Yeah, right. Because it all goes back into you know really what you what you want. Because uh, what's what's the right budget? Well, it depends on what you what, what you want. Yeah, you can be budgeting for a house. You can be you might got a, <coughs> a lemon. You're trying to upgrade your vehicle. You might just be trying to um, save some money so you can start having a family, having children, and you know children are expensive. So you're like, hey, let's start saving for this now that we're married or now that we're engaged. We know we want to have kids right away. Let's start putting some money aside so we're not blindsided 
of the ex with the expense of having a family or hey I really want a dog first before we have kids so let's start planning to put money aside so we can get a dog and the supplies that goes along with it whatever your goals are like we like we said everyone's goal is different but the objective is the same yeah you have to plan you have to budget um, one thing you want to keep in mind though when it comes to budgeting and planning is to allow for things to change be fluid because things will change like Brandon was saying earlier that at the beginning of your marriage you're you might have different uh, hobbies like you're into golf or playing mm -hmm. pool or playing uh, betting on poker going to the casino whatever your little vices are whatever things you do for fun they will change and so your budget naturally is going to change as well so just be able to adjust to those changes by still keeping communication open, still um, sitting down, we do like a, a monthly what we want, what our goal is for the month, what we're looking for, how much we're looking to save, what are we trying to, what debt are we trying to break down this month, what's the goal, mm -hmm. and then like mid month we kind of see where we are, what we can do to trim trim away some extra fat if we've been eating out a lot, yeah. or if we've been um, Amazon shopping a lot. That was me at one point. No shame. We're in recovery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, and those are just things that you got to have. And, um, you know, we're kind of running long here. So the idea is um, I want to talk to you about, which we covered a lot um, as far as access, finances, what, you know, outlook and things. But I want to talk to the compassionate side. Like, hey, I heard what y'all were saying, but... I suck at budgeting. This sucks for me. I hear what you're saying. I know I need to do it, but um, I'm weak at that. And I, for, if you're thinking that, if you have that type of mindset, whatever, I'm gonna let you know that it's okay. No yes. one's ever told you that you can do it and all that stuff. We will tell you that because you can. Mm -hmm. You just gotta take it step by step. Um, you got. Uh, it's not about necessarily how much money you make. It's what you can keep. Right, it's yeah. the idea of accumulation. Like you can accumulate a lot with the idea of not spending a lot, but you'll only get to that point if you realize you don't need that much, and of, of what you feel like you really need. And you can't just come up with that overnight. You have to see it for yourself. Yes. So that means writing down the things that you're spending money on. Everything, every cent that goes out, make a log of it. You will see right away what's out of control quote unquote or what you can reduce and pull back on or what you actually can invest a little bit more on and you can see and just based on having things written out it'll shed a whole lot of insight on where your money's going and what it's doing and that alone will help you start budgeting because the first step is to get everything written out so you know what's actually coming in and going out every month and you and the um, I guess what is it the um, return of happiness investment? Mm -hmm. You will be very pleased with yourself. And it doesn't won't take. You could be a week. Mm -hmm. You could plan out. You can see what it feels like for a week. Say, hey, I'm a budget out for a week. I want. I'm starting with this, and I want to end with this. And seven days later, if I make it, you can do a cartwheel <laughs> all by yourself. No one. You'll be so excited. And then you'll do it for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And really, it's about um, developing the. It's about developing the level of discipline for yourself. It has nothing to do with your. Um, before you, you don't discipline yourself, spouse. You discipline yourself. And if you discipline yourself, and the other spouse discipline themselves, y'all can work together very clearly. But discipline comes from within. Motivation for comes with from within. Setting a good cell about your destination comes from within and meaning don't try to cut like this all this debt and budget knowledge don't go to your spouse and say i didn't hear brandon Jalencia say that this is what you need to do they've been doing it for a thousand years so this is what you need to do no 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 it's not it's not that way it's more so taking what's useful taking these insights building each other up if I suck at budgeting, if I'm weak at this, have, you know, you left your person lift you up or you try to lift yourself up, you know, if I know I'm weak in this because it's not going away. And, um, you know, we're here to help you. We'll provide you what you might want to need to hear. But just know that if I'm weak in this, I got to get strong in it. Yes. 
Because you shouldn't, even though most families function that way, you shouldn't only put the responsibility on one person. Even if you're not the one that's setting up the auto pays to pay your bills or and uh, calling credit card companies and paying your bills, at least you still should know what's going on and what's being paid and what's being done. You might not do the action, but your involvement, no matter how small, does mean a lot to your partner. Because it, after all, is a partnership. It's a marriage, it's a union. You're now one person, one entity, so you should operate as that. Yes. Well, I think that for the much covers, we're going to pay some bills real fast. Uh, to make sure um, if you got something worthwhile hearing, we'll give you something to, that's worthwhile doing. Go down to um, RileyApproach.com or VelocityUnleashed.com. Go to both, yeah. Um, VelocityUnleashed.com as well as RileyApproach.com. And um, just to let you know, and this for some people out there, um, if you're looking for like um, some ad space, because uh, we got the traffic, we got over... Uh, um, Half a million people coming came to our website last um, last month, um, so we're growing. Well, uh, we're growing fast, but we're growing, and we want uh, to make sure that we um, uh, provide exposure to anyone that's looking for that. Yeah. Um, so make sure you check out our website, check out our videos. We uh, created some great content, content that you have never seen, some art that you have never seen. It's quite beautiful. Um, so please go check that stuff out and let us know what you think. And if you don't want to let us know what you think, go tell a friend and let them tell them what you think. And they'll tell a friend and they'll tell them what they think. And then, you know, pay it forward. Seven degrees of separation and all that other good stuff. Yeah. Go, go tell your mama. and Go tell your daddy, your granny, Paul, <laughs> and everybody. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're um, glad that you took some time with us to listen to what we thought about. How you can get these uh, money matters together. Yes. It's about them snaps, cheese, chips, dollars, and coins. Yeah, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. So let us know what you think. Uh, thank you for uh, spending some time with us this evening. And uh, you got anything Until else for me? Until next time. Nope, that's it. Until next time. Okay, well then, that's peace.